Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Garrigan. I'm your instructor for TLT 470, Technology for Teaching and Learning. You can think of this as maybe titled Transformative Technology for Schools. I'm a professor of practice of teaching, learning, and technology in Lehigh University's College of Education. So we're talking about technology in schools, but how, what, what specific technology will we be talking about? We're going to focus on the technologies of learning, meaning kids sitting at desktop computers or working with personal devices, iPads, or even phones. There's technology for teaching, like smart boards. Well, we can't do that online, uh, but we will focus a lot on the, the technology for teaching online, teaching and learning online. And uh, teachers will be learning how to manage events where their kids are learning from technology. There's also administrative technology uh, for attendance and grade keeping. There are the technologies of control like surveillance and, and access, but we are not going to be talking about those at all. So how big a deal is technology? Some classrooms in the U.S. have none, others have tons of it. Well, let me give you just a, a framework, an overview. Uh, in Maine, in the year 2000, um, laptop computers were issued to every 7th and 8th grader. Uh, they could take them home, use them in school, uh, 24,000 laptops. Uh, between 2009 and 2011, uh, every kid in, you, in Uruguay received a laptop and free internet access, every kid in the country. And in Los Angeles in uh, uh, 2014, they started a rollout of an iPad for every student. Uh, that would, co uh, would cost one billion dollars if it were completed. At the bottom is the president of Peru's announcement that they've reached a target of uh, providing a laptop to over 800,000 of their children. Una laptop, un niño, one laptop, one child. The idea is that to learn 21st century skills, you need 21st century tools. You can't do it without it. So why did each one do this? For different reasons. For Maine, they felt that their economy needed to be more future-oriented. Uh, there are not going to be as many lobstermen and fishermen in terms of careers. Their kids needed to be connected to the world. In Uruguay, they wanted equity. They wanted to bridge the gap between the wealthy kids in some of the cities and large estates and the poor kids in the mountainous villages. In Los Angeles, they wanted to increase test scores of standardized tests. How did they do? Maine has been so successful their parents won't allow them to pull the program back. Uh, so they are using all of the resources they can to expand the program to grades 9 to 12. In Uruguay, it has already improved the self-esteem of the kids. They feel more powerful and it's in increased the motivation of both kids and teachers in school. Parents are participating actively. In fact, 94% of, of Uruguay parents love the system. They think it's really great. In Los Angeles, well, they had to, had to postpone the program because of massive corruption. When you get a billion dollars floating around, that may be what happens. Their superintendent had to resign. So we'll see what happens there. But the technology we focus on in our course can be used anytime, anywhere. At school, at home, uh, teachers can assign projects with the technology, or if not every kid has a device, it can be optional or they can be invited to explore. Uh, cost, licensing, minimal. The, the technologies we'll talk, with, uh, talk about are either zero or low cost, and licensing should not be an issue. You can install them anywhere uh, without any legal problems, and uh, no devices are left out. doesn't matter if you have an iPad, a Mac, Windows, Android. Um, not all of the, the technologies we talk about will run on every device but there'll be something that will work on everything. 
So how, te how ubiquitous is technology in the U.S.? Again, setting our framework. Uh, well, in the U.S., over 30% of school districts are either fully one-to-one -one or they have a one-to-one -one, like secondary level or high school or, or a particular grade level. In the states, uh, Maine is, uh, is leading the show as you, as you learned. Pennsylvania uh, did a, a nice job, it should be a PA, uh, a couple of years ago providing a laptop for almost every high school student. Uh, and the others are talking about it, but, but that's not, that, has, that hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, Richmond, Virginia is one of the most notable cities that has had a laptop one-to-one -one project since 2002. Uh, locally, Salisbury High School has all MacBooks. Uh, the Saucon Valley School District has 7th and 8th graders with iPads. And they're expanding toward in, in 9 to 12. Parkland School District has kids bringing their own uh, devices for one-to-one. -one. So the question is not if, but when this will come to your school district. It's a global initiative. What's special about technology? Kids really can interact with technology in three different ways. They can learn about technology, like programming courses or learning about Microsoft Office. They can learn from technology. That's what Study Island is about, or what the Pearson software that uh, didn't get put into uh, Los Angeles was, was there for. It was to teach the kids about math or science or social studies. We're going to focus on learning with technology. That's what you do with a word processor. It doesn't teach you how to write, but it does empower you to write in, in different, more flexible ways. We have a great textbook. The focus is on meaningful learning, not just, hey, teacher, I'm finished with my work. Can I play on the computer? No, this is how to make learning more meaningful than it usually is. Uh, the, uh, the heart and soul of this is Dave Jonathan. He was uh, America's leading instructional designer. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. Uh, but the three authors are professors in or were uh, at the University of Missouri. Uh, it's a, a great, uh, great text. The organization of the text and the course is not what you might expect. We're not organized by subjects like we're going to do English and reading and math, social studies, then science technology. Nor is it by grade level. We'll start at elementary technology, then middle school, then high school. No. It's organized by how you think with the technology. So inquiring with technology for research, experimenting with technology, perhaps using sensors, communicating and collaborating like we're doing, writing with technology, designing, modeling, visualizing. That will all make sense to you through the weekly mini-projects where you will actually put these ideas to use with specific websites or software. Uh, the weekly mini-projects will be sort of hands-on things. You might build something or build a learning activity with it or show how a teacher might use it. There'll be two major course challenges. We'll, you'll get the details of that as the course progresses, but there's a writing project uh, I call a book synthesis where you'll be picking one or more books from a book list among, uh, in addition to our required text, and a technology project where you'll create something that you'll be able to use with your students in your classroom or however you want to use it uh, toward the end of class or after the course is over. So how do you begin? Well, you already have begun, but know that course site is your authority. That's where all of the detail, all of the step-by-step -step items in the course directions will be, will be provided. So when, when this video is completed, uh, that will unlock for you the course syllabus. When you download that, that will unlock the, the, week's first, the first week's activities. And you'll see how that works as we go on. The syllabus is only a guide, but it's useful for three things. It tells you roughly what topics we'll be doing each week. Also, how we will meet each week. So most of the course is asynchronous, meaning you work at your own pace online. 
but uh, we will have several meetups which are required for the international students. It's an optional for the rest of us, but you're invited. Uh, so week two will be our first meetup, and uh, week three will be our first live web conference where we're all online together. We can argue and discuss, ask questions. The specific dates of those uh, and times we will negotiate collaboratively in the first week, but the syllabus will tell you each week uh, when we are doing these things. So uh, with that introduction, again, welcome to the course. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I know you'll learn lots.